for Stranger to Us. We know Brother Mike McCurg. He has been with us for some time now, and we are very blessed to have him with us again. He is the Director of Training for Campus Ministry International, and he is here to share with us what the Lord has laid on his heart. And so I invite you to open your hearts as he pours out from the Holy Ghost. God bless you, sir. Amen. Thank you so much, Danielle, for having me again. <clears throat> I always love being with you all. The Lord always does some amazing things, and it's exciting uh, about what God is doing <clears throat> in Jamaica. I am I'm very excited, and uh, I believe that we are going to uh, pick up off or pick up on where we left off which was the last time. Well, I'll mention this too real quick uh, for anyone that might be interested in a deeper dive uh, with campus ministry. Um, I, did I did just recently release a book that's titled The Conquered Campus. Uh, it's been about a four-year project and it's primarily about spiritual warfare on college campuses and how we can overcome these secular campuses. So uh, maybe at some point I'll drop in the chat a link for you to check it out you know what, I'll just drop it in there real quick because I'll probably forget later. But if you want to look it up, it's going to have all the information on this website. And there will be, since I know you guys are international compared to the U.S., I know that, you know, some of you might like, um, that's the website, the school of Um, I know that you guys um, might like PDF versions and I'll have a PDF version or electronic version available in the near future. Um, but all of the proceeds of that book are going to go right back in the resource. I'm not taking a cent. It was never about money. It's just about releasing the burden for campus ministry, praise God. So that'll be available if you want to look it up on that website I just dropped in the chat. But let's go ahead and jump in here. I'm going to be talking about, I'm continuing my lesson on spiritual warfare. I'm talking about um, <clears throat> last, last time when I spoke, I talked a little bit about the gates of hell. And I talked about uh, the need for us to have the keys to the kingdom. And it was cool because as I was coming to a close with you all, the Lord really uh, dropped in my spirit the verse to kind of to, to start start with the next time I came on. And so that's Ephesians chapter two, verses uh, one through three. So I'm going to read those to you in a minute, but I want to go ahead and just pray over this uh, meeting. And uh, if we do have time, I actually have to run to a leadership meeting at my church tonight. So I might not have time for Q&A, but if for some reason I do and I'm able to finish in time, uh, I would love to answer any questions that you might have about the subject. But let's go ahead and let's pray and just ask the Lord to do a work tonight and uh, to open our spirits, our hearts, and to open our ears to receive in Jesus name. And we'll jump into it. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the authority of the word of God, and by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that every single individual that's on this call, Lord, that you'd anoint our ears to hear, anoint our eyes to see in the spirit, give us the ability to comprehend what is being said, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you'd anoint my mind, that you'd anoint my mouth, you'd anoint me to speak your word with faith and with authority, and that, Lord, you would take us to a new place of revelation and understanding. Lord, your word says in Ephesians, that you have given us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. So I pray that tonight, God, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation would be loosed on this call so that we would hear your word, that we'd submit to your word, God, and we would walk in that word. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, I give you all the glory and I give you all the praise for what you're doing. And God, I just pray that you'd lead us and guide us into all truth, into the authority that you've called us to walk in so we can have a great harvest on our campuses in the name of Jesus I pray praise God praise God I want to say this real quick before I jump in that it is so critical for us not only to be in the truth but for us to be activated by truth we cannot just uh, preach truth we cannot just say we believe truth but we must also submit and yield to truth the Bible says they that are the sons of God are led of the spirit. The word led in the Greek means to be governed by. 
to literally be governed by the spirit of God, where the spirit of God is saying, go left, go right, go straight, go back, do this, do that. We need to be led of the spirit. That is the place that God is trying to take his people to because he's called us as sons, as sons and daughters to be governed, to, to operate with the father in his authority and power. You see, it was in uh, the story of the prodigal son that the first thing that happened for the prodigal son when he came home is the father came and he, he put his arms around him. And if you watch what the father did, it's very, very powerful. The father uh, went ahead and put the ring on his finger clothed him with the robe uh, with a robe as well there was a few things that were happening here that were so powerful and i believe he put his sandals on his feet this what's so powerful about this is that when he put the ring on his finger that denoted authority that represented the fact that i am putting you back into the father's business because that ring is a signet ring that gives you the ability to act in the father's name right because back in the old times in the ancient times they would have a ring that would have uh the the signature or the emblem that represented at just as if the father was putting his stamp of approval and saying, I, I denote and say that this transaction is valid. I, I am, I am exercising my authority over this transaction, right? So when he put that ring on the sun, he's saying, you can now operate in my business again, my under my authority, right? Because the sons of God, the, the daughters of God are supposed to walk in the authority of the name of Jesus, right? Now, we don't have a physical ring that's put around our around our, our, our finger, but we do have the name of Jesus Christ, which is all power and all authority uh, on heaven and earth. And so that when we act in authority and we speak the name of Jesus as a son of, or daughter, we are speaking on behalf of Christ. And in Christ, if we are led of the spirit, he is going in there and validating those things that are being done because we're speaking with his authority, we're speaking his words. And so what does that look like? I was just on a call earlier today doing some teaching, and I was explaining to people that the ch God is trying to take the church from the place of just laying on of hands, because our faith in the church has been a lot about just laying on of hands. And I'm not saying you don't lay, you should lay hands on people. That's biblical. But here's my point. God is trying to take us to a new place of faith where we're not just laying hands on people physically, but we are speaking to the mountain and commanding to be commanding it to be moved and cast into the sea. God's trying to take the church from not just doing and, and putting their hands on things, but to a place of speaking. That is a whole nother place of faith and authority. You see, Jesus would speak and then the devils jump, jumped out of the man, went into the pigs and, and went off the cliff, right? He spoke to the demoniac. Jesus spoke to the storm. Jesus spoke healing to the blind man. Jesus spoke healing to the lepers. Jesus would speak because he walked in authority because yes, he was the one true God, but he said that these things I do, you can even do, I feel the Holy Ghost, you can even do greater things than the things that I'm doing, right? Because God wants us to come to a place where we are acting and walking in authority because authority is having a right in the spirit realm to operate with power. And you see, when Jesus stood up in, in Luke chapter four and he began to speak in the synagogue, the people said, who is this man that speaks with such authority? It says it's unlike the scribes, because you see the scribes had a knowledge of the word, but they were not submitted to the word. They were not submitted to the will of God. And so therefore they did not have authority because there's only one way for you to get spiritual authority. And it's through submission and obedience to God's word, to God's spirit, and to God's man that he's put in your life, meaning your pastor or your leader. So we have to be willing. And I feel God right now you got to hear me because God is trying to help you on your campuses and in your cities to to go to a new place of faith where it's not just about oh if I can just get my hands upon them and to, and, and and just teach them a Bible study if I can just lay hands on them and command them to be healed no you can speak it from your bedroom you see God allowed COVID and all this stuff to happen to take the church to a place we start learning how to speak in the atmosphere and speak 
to the spirit realm. You see, we've been quarantined and we think, oh, we've been so quarantined and we're stuck and we're in the house. And how is the kingdom of God going to continue? The kingdom of God is all built upon speaking. It's built upon releasing the word of faith anyway. So it's good that the church had to take a little break from being so caught up on our traditional way of doing things and getting back to the biblical roots of the way that the kingdom is established is by speaking with authority. It was Jesus in Matthew chapter 21 when he looked at the fig tree and he cursed the fig tree and he said, I command that there be no more fruit on this fig tree any longer. And the Bible says that the apostles were shocked because when they looked at the tree, there was no more fruit. They looked at the tree and the tree was withered up and died. And they said, my goodness, he spoke to the tree and the tree obeyed him. Well, of course, because when you are speaking on the behalf of the power and authority of the name of Jesus Christ, when the one true God's living voice is speaking, stuff happens, stuff changes, things are now have life and some things now have death. When you speak life, when you speak the word of faith, things happen in the spirit. And you see, that was when Jesus looked at the apostles and he said, you only need faith the size of a mustard seed to say unto this mountain, be plucked up and cast into the sea. You see, Jesus was trying to show them that it's not necessarily about having the greatest faith in the world. It's about being able to hear what God is wanting to do and at least believing the word that God has put in your spirit. And if you believe the word that God's put in your spirit and you speak it, things happen. Let me help you. The way that faith works, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? The word of God in that scripture in the Greek, the word word means rhema, God's living spoken voice. So what it's saying is that faith cometh by me hearing God's living spoken voice, right? I hear what God is speaking. I hear what God is quickening to me. And then I begin to speak it until it happens. That is the operation of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When I hear what God has said, I believe what God has said. Now I speak what God has said, and I keep on speaking until it happens. The Bible says that if you ask, it shall be given. If you knock, it shall be opened. And if you uh, seek, you shall find. Well, if you look at that scripture in the Greek, it's saying if you ask and keep on asking, you will receive. If you knock and keep on knocking, it will be opened. If you seek and keep on seeking, you will find. What's the revelation? This is the revelation. The way that God's kingdom is built is upon speaking God's words. The way that the kingdom of God was built in the very beginning, in the very first chapter of the Bible, it says, in the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. You see, that is how the kingdom of God operates. It operates by God's living spoken voice being released into the atmosphere, and then it begins to change the atmosphere. But you see, we get so caught up on what's happening with flesh and blood that we forget to speak to the atmosphere, which is affecting flesh and blood, because the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness. It, the Bible's trying to help us to see you're not dealing with flesh. You're not dealing with people. You're dealing with spirits. And God is trying to get his church to start seeing the kingdom. John 3, 5, except a man, John 3, 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you cannot see the kingdom, how are you going to speak and release the kingdom? You see, we become satisfied when we get born again of water and spirit and enter into the kingdom and we stop there. But God is trying to get his church to not just 
enter into the kingdom, but to see the kingdom on a regular daily basis. And I know there's some stuff I'm hitting again, but I just feel in the Holy Ghost that I've got to reiterate some of these things. So what is God saying to the church? God is trying to tell the church, man, I feel the Holy Ghost. God is telling the church, we have got to get to a place where we walk in kingdom authority. The Bible says that the adversary, the kingdom of darkness, it is aggressive. It comes against our, it comes against the people of God very strongly, right? The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, but the violent take it by force. He's saying we've got to be aggressive in the spirit. The adversary is attacking people and influencing people and they don't even understand why they do what they do they don't understand why they think what they think they don't understand why they go where they go because they are under spiritual influence and spiritual bondage in the only way you can break spiritual bondage is by releasing through your spoke through the spoken word of what God's word is. And then the scriptures say, I believe it's in the book of Jeremiah, isn't my word. He said it's like a hammer and breaks into the rocks into pieces. When God's word goes forth, it literally shatters. It breaks asunder the chains of darkness. But the problem is we are trying to help people that are blind in the natural. We're trying to fight a natural battle. We're trying to win through preaching and doing all these things just in the natural when God needs us to address things in the spirit because we are wrestling not against flesh and blood. In the way that you deal with spirits is you operate in kingdom authority by being submitted to the will of God, submitted to the word of God, and submitted to your leadership that God has given you. And when you are submitted to those things and you begin to speak with authority in the spirit realm, this is how it works. You'll be in prayer or you'll be woken up in the middle of the night and then all of a sudden you just feel this unction come over you. You just feel like you need to speak something specific. You you feel like you you just you have a you have a spirit that comes to mind and you start speaking to it. And I'll give you some examples here in a minute because we're talking about walking in kingdom authority. We're talking about what started in the book of Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning God said and it happened. In the beginning, God said, and it happened. He said this, he said that, and God's still speaking, but he's trying to find vessels. He's trying, oh my, my Lord. Do you realize that Jesus Christ, God manifested in flesh? You see, God always uses flesh to accomplish what he needs to accomplish because God needs a vessel. God is always looking for a man. He said in the scriptures, I looked for a man, but I could not find one. I, I needed somebody to stand in the gap and make up the hedge, but I couldn't find one because God has a plan and God has a will and he wants to release it into the earth, but he has chosen through his word, he has chosen to use humanity to release his kingdom but he needs his humanity to get lost in the spirit realm to get submitted in the spirit realm to begin to see the kingdom of god so we can speak to those things that are not as if they already are because we're supposed to speak and keep on speaking until it happens now when you are dealing with authority god will begin to move upon you and it might not even be this big, massive, oh, hallelujah, and this thing just wrecks you. No, it might be you walking down the street and you just have a person's per, a person come to your mind and you just feel like, oh man, I gotta speak to them. Like I gotta speak to, I gotta speak to their spirit, I gotta speak to their situation. You you might you might wake up in the middle of the night just thinking about false doctrine, and God's wanting you to speak that creative power into the atmosphere and break and bind the false doctrine that's got your campus bound or your city bound. You might wake up in the middle of the night and feel to speak very specific words into the spirit. You see, God needs us to speak in the spirit, speak into the spiritual atmosphere because that's where mountains are moved. That's how things get plucked up and cast into the sea. That's why Jesus said, and nothing will be impossible to you. He wasn't talking about, oh, you want a Ferrari? You want a cigarette boat? Then you just speak to it. No, I know that you got these guys on YouTube. They say some crazy stuff. They say, oh, you just keep thinking and you keep imagining. You keep speaking. And I'm telling you that million dollars is yours. 
No. If people try to tag that to Christianity, that is perverted scripture. If you look in first John, first uh, John chapter five, verse 14, it says we have this confidence that when we know his will and we speak it, God's going to perform it. I'm paraphrasing it, but it's saying that our confidence in God, our confidence in his kingdom comes down to this. When we speak his will, things happen. That is the confidence that we've got to get as a church again. We've got to find this confidence of hearing the voice of God and repeating it. We got to hear the word of God, hear the voice of God, and repeat it until it comes to pass. That is when things begin to change. And that was the difference between Jesus and the Pharisees and the scribes. Jesus was a man of authority. When he spoke, the Bible says that their heart burned within them. Why? Because they felt the authority of God. Our campus, our campuses and our cities do not need more people that just have more churches. No, we need people with authority and Holy Ghost power, because when they get around somebody that has true authority, they can begin to feel their heart within them burn. And they say, there's something different about this man. There's something different about this woman. They've got something that I want. That's why it's so critical for us to make the most important goal in our life to hear the voice of God and repeat it into the atmosphere, to hear what God says and speak it, hear it, speak it. That's why <clears throat> some of the most powerful men and women of God are the, the, who they are. They're prayer warriors. They're people that have learned to get connected to the spirit. And from no matter where they are in the world, they begin to speak and stuff begins to happen. My goodness. There was a girl, a young lady that I'm very, my wife and I are very close to. She actually got saved only about four years ago. And she started struggling greatly just about, well, for the last few months. But her sister, who's also a new convert, they both were saved through campus ministry. She called me and she said, hey, my sister is literally about to leave the truth. My sister is so worried about her appearance. She's hearing, you know, these voices in her head that are telling her just to give it up. She's feeling all this influence and stuff is pulling her, you know, all these different directions. And she doesn't know what to do. Uh, she, she, she's thinking about leaving the church. She's wanting to go visit other churches that are not in truth. What do I do? I don't know what to do. As soon as she started telling me this, the Lord began to reveal to me that the spirit of Jezebel was trying to take out this young lady because she is a prophetess. She's very prophetic. She's very powerful. And whenever Jezebel is attacking a woman, uh, she the way that the spirit works, is it, it comes for a woman's appearance. It comes, it's a spirit of vanity. It, it, it comes with also attacking in, in intimidation. You have a lot of intimidation and a lot of vanity that attacks a woman. That's the spirit of Jezebel. The way it attacks a man is a little bit different. It's through intimidation and seduction. But the way it comes against a woman is a lot through vanity and, and trying to get them to, you know, to look different and to try to look like the world and tries to tempt them. That's why when Jezebel uh, was about to be attacked by Jehu, she went and put makeup on, right? Because that spirit knows how to uh, attack. It knows what to do. And that's the way that she attacked uh, the male was trying to uh, intimidate. She had intimidated Elijah and then she tried to seduce Jehu, but Jehu was not intimidated and he was not seduced and therefore he could destroy Jezebel. Well, anyway, this spirit, God started showing me that a, a spirit of Jezebel was trying to take out this young lady. And I said to her sister, I said, we need to begin to pray and speak with authority against the spirit of Jezebel that is trying to destroy your sister. It's gotten into the home. It operates through uh, one of her family members and it, and it intimidates her and it try, it just it tries to tear her down and tell her, you don't need that church. You know, I said, that's the spirit of Jezebel. And I told her that and she said, okay, let's pray. This was only three weeks ago. The young lady was, her sister was about to leave church. We began to pray together. She prayed on her own time. My wife and I prayed on our own time and began to attack that spirit of Jezebel and take authority over it. Literally, I just got a text a few days ago where <clears throat> the young lady, the sister texted us and said, you, you guys have got to hear this testimony. Not only is my sister doing better, she said she wants this truth. She doesn't want to leave it. And she said, I know somebody 
has prayed for me because nothing in my surroundings changed, but in my spirit, in my mind, in my heart, something broke, something changed. You see, we have to address, my God, we have got to address things in the spirit. You see, when we begin to see things go haywire, we go after it and try to accomplish things in the flesh. Hey, let's have a conversation. Hey, let, let, let's let just lay hands upon you. Hey, let's, now all that's not bad, that's good, but what if we addressed things in the spirit by getting strategic insight and discernment on what is happening in that atmosphere? Okay, what is attacking this young lady? Okay, what is coming against the church? Okay, what, why am I feeling depressed? What is this, what is the spirit? You see, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and if we would begin as a church to address things in the spirit by speaking with authority from God, I'm telling you, you'd have such a revival and a harvest, you wouldn't have room to put any to put people in there because there'd be such an overflow of Holy Ghost power and authority because you will have addressed the ruling spirits, the principalities. You will have addressed the very spirits that have got these people bound. It was Paul who said uh, when he got knocked off of his horse in the book of Acts, the Lord visited him. I think it was Acts 26, if I'm not uh, yes, I believe it was 26. And the Lord came to him and he said, why are you kicking against the pricks? He said, why are you, why are you coming against me? And he, he's like, who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus who you're persecuting. And he said, I have called you for this purpose. This is what God said to Paul. I have called you for this purpose to take them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins. You see, we skip the first two parts and we jump into, let's go get everybody forgiven of their sins and baptized in the name. But when Jesus came to Paul and called him for the first time, he said to him, you need to first remove their blindness. You need to take them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins. You see, that's the missing element that we, that's the thing we're missing in the kingdom is that we are not addressing the strong man whose goods are at peace and he's got these people bound. But it says when a man stronger than him shows up and then spoils his house and then he's, or excuse me, he binds the strong man and spoils his goods. Jesus was telling Paul, I'm calling you to go and bind the strong man and to break the adversary back so that people can then receive forgiveness of sins and, and receive the faith, be sanctified by the faith that is in you, that is in me. You see, we've got to address in the spirit what is happening, and then people will want to be saved because they are blind. They don't know why they're blind. <clears throat> All they know is that they are doing things, they don't know why they're doing them. They're reaching for things, and they don't know why they're reaching for them. They're, they're influenced. How are they influenced? Why are they influenced? I did all that, in, I'm not, I guess you could say introduction to get to the verse that I mentioned in the beginning. But you got to understand how to speak with authority and the purpose of authority if you're going to understand this next verse. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Watch this. This is a revelation of how the prince in, in power of the air operates. It's right here. Paul reveals it in the book of Ephesians. Again. God spoke to Paul and said, I'm calling you for this purpose, to break their bondage, darkness to light, power of Satan and God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins. And that same Paul wrote this passage in Ephesians. And this is what he said. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Okay, that's the way we, that was the state of where we used to be. He said, where in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Talking about Satan and Satan's operation and how Satan does have authority in this atmosphere, not more authority than God, not more authority than a child of God who submitted to God, because Jesus Christ, when he died and rose again, rose again he took the keys to death, hell, and the grave. So Jesus has all authority. He spoiled all principalities and powers at Colossians chapter three, but only if we are exercising it, only if we are submitted to it, only if we are speaking it actively, 
So watch. You walked according to the prince and power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Wait, the spirit, the prince and power of the air, and that spirit works in, dis in the disobedient? How? How does that spirit work? Verse 3 gives us that answer. Among whom also we had conversations in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. He's telling us the semicolon is there after children of disobedience because he's giving you the answer to how that spirit, the prince and power of the air works in the atmosphere. It works by getting people to fulfill the desires of their flesh and of their mind, their emotions and their thoughts. You see, Satan operates through the thoughts and through emotions. That is how he influences. There are some people, sure, they are demon possessed. Absolutely. There are people that are possessed, but the majority of people are not possessed. They're oppressed. They are influenced by the spirit realm. And so what happens is through media and through music and through relationships and through all these different things being thrown out. These are all the voices of this world, the influences of this world that they begin to listen to. Now watch, Satan just copies and imitates everything God does, right? So the way that God operates is that he has us operate by walking by faith. How do I walk by faith? The way I walk by faith is I hear God's word. I believe God's word. I speak and act upon God's word. How does the adversary work? Same exact process in reverse. He releases doubt. He releases fear. And people, especially today, turn on the news, and this is all over the world. People are walking by not the, the, the spirit of faith or uh, the word of faith. They're walking by the word of doubt and fear. That's why you got all these people freaking out and, and, and living in so much fear because they are listening to the wrong voice, right? And so what happens is people hear fear, they hear doubt, they believe it, they speak about it, and then they act upon it, right? Satan, nothing is new under the sun. He just copies everything God does and imitates it. So here we go. If Satan is influencing people, through thoughts, the voice of fear, voice of, uh, of seduction, voice of lust, the voice of confusion, the voice of false doctrine. These are the voices of this world that are speaking. He's imitating what the church is supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be speaking. We're supposed to be speaking faith, speaking authority, speaking power, speaking love, speaking peace, speaking truth. And by speaking and releasing God's authority, when people in the spirit, be, the chains begin to be broken and they start to hear the voice of peace, they begin to feel the difference in the atmosphere. And then when we get around them, we begin to even talk to them naturally. They're already open because we've addressed in the spirit first. We've addressed it in the spirit first. Mm. This, the prince and power of the air, the prince and power of the air that's influencing this world, that's influencing your city, needs to be addressed by you standing up and speaking with the word of authority as God leads you and speaking to that campus, speaking to those ruling spirits, speaking to those principalities, speaking to the, those demons that are intimidating and influencing your friends and your family. What would happen in your family? What would happen in your friend group? What would happen in your job, in your classroom, if you focused more than anything on hearing God's word and repeating it? If you focused on hearing what God is speaking, you see, we overcomplicate God's voice. Many times God is putting something in our spirit to speak, and we don't even realize it. But when you're in prayer and you just start feeling to just say something, it's just coming to you. 
speak it. That's the voice from heaven trying to release through you. That's why Jesus told Peter, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. How? How is God going to build his church? And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. How? Peter, I'm giving you keys. Keys of the kingdom of heaven that whatever you bind, how do you bind? By speaking. Whatever you loose. Peter, whatever you bind on earth, it's already been bound in heaven. Whatever you loose in earth has already been loosed in heaven. Jesus is showing us that the keys, my God, the keys to tearing down Satan's gates are in your mouth. They're in your mouth. By binding and loosing what heaven is trying to release into the earth, thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. He, That is the answer to how we build the church. You're not going to build the church by building a bigger building. You're not going to build the church by just having larger worship services. You're not going to build the church by just having a meeting. No, you build the church by taking the keys of the kingdom of heaven, which is the word of authority and power in speaking that into existence from heaven and bring it into earth. And that's when chains are broken. That's when the gates of hell are shattered. That's when, my God, that's when people begin to submit to truth and they begin to walk away from the prince and power of the air because their mind is beginning to be set free. Their emotions are no longer tied to the prince of this world because you've addressed the spirit realm and you've begun to build his church by speaking with authority like Peter and the apostles did. They were in the upper room for 10 days speaking, releasing the keys to the kingdom of heaven into the earth. And there was an outpouring of the Holy Ghost where 3,000 people were saved. And it sent a shockwave. My God, I'm telling you, I feel it right now. Some of you need to start right now. I feel a witness of the spirit right now, wherever you are, begin to open your mouth. Don't, don't I'm not saying just to say hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? Speak with authority the things that God puts in your spirit. Begin to speak to the spirit realm of your campus and to your city and to your family. Begin to speak it because this is your confidence in God. Your confidence is not in yourself. Your confidence is in the fact that when you are hearing God's voice and speaking God's words, he will respond. And when he responds, I'm telling you, the gates of hell will not prevail against the, they will not prevail against the, the, the church in Jamaica will not prevail against the campus ministry in Jamaica because when you speak with authority, things happen. Mountains are moved. The fig tree died. That is the place of answered prayer. That's the place that God is trying to take his church. He's trying to take us to a place where it's not just about doing, but it's about speaking. Jesus showed us in the scriptures, it was about speaking with authority. He said, peace be still in the storm stopped. Right now, with the authority of God that's on this call, I want you to begin to speak with authority and begin to pray right now. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on, there's a witness of the Spirit right now. I don't want to miss this moment. There's a witness of the Spirit right now. Begin to speak to your family. Begin to speak to your friends. Begin to speak to the atmosphere of those things. Come on, right now, in, the, in, the, in, this, in this atmosphere of your room or wherever you are, speak in the Spirit. Speak in the Spirit. Let's hear what heaven's saying. Let's hear what heaven's saying. Let's hear what heaven's saying. I'm telling you, the days of going back to normal, of the way that we used to do church and just hope people came to the building, those days have got to end. They didn't work for years. Yes, some people got saved, but God doesn't want to just see a th three or four people saved. He wants to see the gates of hell broken. He wants to see a harvest and revival where people are getting healed in the streets. He wants to see people getting out of wheelchairs. God wants to release his authority where pastors that are in false doctrine are turning to truth. Whole churches begin to submit to the will of God. People that are demonically possessed are set free. That's the level. That's the place. That's the, that's the anointing and the authority that God is trying to release through you. But it only will come as you begin to speak as heaven speaks through you. 
My God, let's do that right now. Father, reveal to them the ruling spirits. Reveal to, <coughs> reveal to them the resistance. Reveal to them the things that are battling. Reveal to them those spirits of depression. Reveal to them those spirits that are trying to attack the minds and hearts of the people they are working with and that they would address it in the spirit, that they would stand up with authority and power and speak to those things that are not as if they already are. Come on, right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus, speak it with authority. Speak it with authority. Speak it with authority. Come on, even though we've been put into a place of quarantine and all these weird rules and mandates, we can speak in the spirit. You see, the devil was trying to get the church to fold. The devil was trying to get the church to close their doors and say, ah, you can't become anything. Oh, but the devil's got a problem because even though we had to go online sometimes, we've learned to speak with authority. Well, we're going to be way more productive and effective effective in the spirit than we ever were before. You see, COVID tried to take the church out, but we're just getting stronger. We're getting more powerful. We're releasing authority like never before. We're speaking to mountains now that we did not know how to speak to before. Come on, my God, this is what God is beginning to do. I said it earlier on the call when I was preaching. I said it to this group in India. I told them, I said, God is going to begin to wake you up in the middle of the night and he's going to put words in your mouth. God is going to wake you up early in the morning and he's going to put words in your mouth. You're going to be <coughs> going to class and he's going to put words in your mouth. You're going to be walking throughout your day and you're just going to feel words in your mouth. Just begin to speak them. If you stay repentant, you stay submitted. When you speak, God is hearing. God is listening and God is responding. My God, I'm telling you right now, God's going to visit you, some of you in your dreams, and he's going to give you very strategic, specific things to speak into the atmosphere. God's going to visit you. He's going to wake you up in the night. He's going to wake you up early in the morning, and he's going to put words in your mouth to speak. He's going to just put things in your spirit. He's going to put spirits that you need to speak against. He's going to put people on your mind that you need to break the bondage and chains from their minds and spirits. I'm telling Telling you, you will see in your life. I'm telling you, and I prophesy it in the name of Jesus that your life will be forever changed in the next over the next six months if you will every day make your number one priority to hear what heaven is speaking. You speak it and release it into earth. We are called to be heaven's echo into earth. We are called to be heaven's echo. What is released from heaven is supposed to be echoed on earth through God's people. <clears throat> I'm telling you, I prophesied in the name of Jesus that if you will begin every single day to make your number one priority to speak to the atmosphere as God leads you to, you are going to see so many supernatural things happen that it's going to blow your mind because that's the dimension of faith and authority that God wants to take us to. In Jesus' name. Can we all lift our hands and just receive this right now? Can we all just lift our hands and receive God? And I want you to say this out loud to him because I got to go here to my next, to this leadership meeting at my church. I want you to begin to speak this out loud right now. Say, God, I pledge to become your echo to my city. I choose to be your echo to my campus. God, I will be your echo to my family and friends. You become his echo in the spirit and watch the doors that God opens in the natural. Because you see, we have to address in the spirit first, and then God will open the door. Paul said that there is a great effectual door that is open unto me, but many adversaries. Don't worry about the adversaries. Just speak to them and speak those promises, those open doors that you see, and speak to those adversaries and command them to be removed. And you're going to walk right through those open doors effectual, active, fervent doors that God has made available. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for every word you have spoken on this call. Thank you for releasing your authority. Thank you, God, for dealing with us, God, about the need 
for us to speak and be heaven's echo here on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, I give you all the glory and I give you all the praise and the honor. And I thank you for every single one of these precious people. Use them mightily, God, to shake the kingdom of darkness so that the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ can be released in Jesus' name. Praise God. I love you all very much. If you feel to stay in prayer, whatever you feel to do, of course, I, I, I give it to your leaders. Uh, unfortunately, I have to run, but I love you all very much. God bless you. And I know that the Lord is going to do a great work in 2022. We will be heaven's echo in Jesus' name.